Hi, I'm Josh Fishman, President and Owner of A. Fishman & Son. Welcome back to our Ultimate Diamond Education Series. We're going to begin our series with the most important element that you should understand before you go out and buy a diamond, and that is what makes a diamond pretty. This is beyond the four C's, what you should really know before you go out and buy a diamond. If you're watching this video, you've probably seen a lot of information online about the four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carat weight. And you've been told that if you can only spend a little while learning these four C's, you can become an expert and buy a diamond from the certificate alone. I'm here to tell you that this is a myth. Why am I qualified to tell you this? Because I'm a third generation diamond tear from a family of diamond dealers that has been buying diamonds for decades and has spent their own money buying diamonds for our inventory. Only by spending your own money can you really become an expert in any field of business, and that includes diamonds. So I'm going to share that expertise with you, expertise that I've learned from my father and my grandfather before me because they have been buying diamonds before there was a GIA, before there was a Four C's, before there were certifications. And that is the only way that I can help you understand how to really go out and buy a diamond. So let's get started with what makes a diamond pretty. There are three factors, and all of them have to be present for that diamond to be desirable and worth investing your money. The three crucial elements that make a diamond pretty are, one, the physical size of the diamond has to reflect what a well-cut diamond of that weight should look like, two, the diamond has to be brilliant, and three, the inclusions in the diamond have to be pleasing to the eye when looked at under magnification. Let's examine these three factors individually. The physical size of a diamond in millimeters should reflect what a well-cut diamond of that weight is supposed to look like. For example, a one-carat round diamond should measure approximately six and a half millimeters in diameter. There are many one-carat diamonds that only measures 6.0 or 6.1 millimeters. This is a diameter for a well-cut three-quarter carat stone. It will not surprise you to find out that that 6.0 millimeter one-carat diamond will sell for a lot less than a 6.5 millimeter round diamond of the same quality. But you don't want that 6.0 millimeter round diamond because you want a diamond that looks like a one-carat. A picture is worth a thousand words. So take a look at this picture which reflects an example that happened to us in our business. If you look at the photo in front of you, you will quickly understand what the point I'm trying to make is. The diamond on the right was sent to us by a customer who was considering buying it. I was frightened for him. I pulled out a diamond that also weighed one carat of ours and photographed them together, sent him the picture, and he quickly understood why he should not buy the diamond on the right. I'm sure you can understand which one is more desirable. It doesn't matter what the price of the diamond is on the right versus the one on the left. These happen to be both the same quality diamond, the same grade on paper, but one, the one on the left, is desirable, the one on the right is not. The one on the right was less expensive, but it was not the one that the customer ultimately bought. We took that photo and converted it into this beautiful ad, which I think helps explain quickly. A picture is worth a thousand words. Second, a diamond has to be brilliant. The brilliance of a diamond refers to the light and fire that reflects back at you when you look at it. It's a visual. It's not something that you can see from a certificate. This diagram shows a well-proportioned diamond and how light acts with the angles of the diamond. The angles of the diamond, as you can see from this next diagram, are number one upper girdle angles, number two, lower girdle angles, and number three, the culet angle. This is a result of the height of the diamond and how the girdle, the crown, and the pavilion are cut and fit together. Part of it is depth percentages and part of it is not. As you can see from the shallow cut diagram, which I will hypothesize for you is the same depth percentage as a well-proportioned diamond, but the upper girdle angles are lower, the lower girdle angles are lower, and the culet angle is much bigger. This gives a different 
look and a different reflection of light. Similarly, a deep cup diamond, which you see in this diagram, has a much smaller culet angle down at the bottom and much bigger lower girdle angles just underneath the girdle. Light bounces, reflects across, and refracts out of the diamond. In this next diagram, which is a very interesting one, it's a much deeper stone from a depth percentage point of view. But the angles are the same as a well-proportioned diamond. So the light reflects back at you. So you would think this is a great diamond. It's going to even cost less because it's a smaller diamond. But again, it doesn't fit criteria number one. The diamond has to look its weight. This diamond does not look its weight. It's going to be a narrower diamond. So if you see a diamond like this versus a diamond with a shallow or deep cup, you're going to like this one better. But it is not what you should be buying. You have to be buying the diamond as shown in diagram number one, a well-proportioned diamond. Third, the nature of the inclusions in the diamond have to be pleasing when looked at under magnification. Judging whether the nature of the inclusions in a diamond are pleasing or not may seem to be an easy task. After all, aren't all VS1s the same? Aren't all SI1s the same? So all I have to do is see which stone is lower priced and that's the better deal. That is another myth. All VS1s are not the same and all SI1s are not the same. There are a range and every diamond has its own unique characteristics. Some are pleasing, some are not pleasing. An SI1 with a certain type of inclusion may be more pleasing than a VS2. The VS2 may have a black imperfection in the center of the stone. The SI1 may have a few small white imperfections around the edge. The SI1, which in today's market will cost less than the VS2, is a more desirable diamond than the VS2. And you can't just go buy the grade. You need somebody who will actually look at the diamond for you, who will judge the nature of the inclusions, somebody who has bought that diamond. So when I take a diamond and I look at that diamond under magnification, I look and see whether that diamond is desirable. If it's desirable, I'm interested. If it's not, I'm not interested in buying it. And the same should go for you. You need to speak to somebody who's an expert, who can look at the diamond, not just somebody online who has a list of diamonds to sell and will describe the diamond to you from a piece of paper, from the certificate, but somebody who has the diamond in front of him, who has bought the diamond, who has spent his own money, and who knows the nature and can describe the nature of the inclusions to you honestly. Only an expert diamond tear who's bought and put his money into those diamonds can help you. So that is what makes a diamond pretty. You need all these three factors. The measurements of the stone have to be right, the brilliance has to be right, and the nature of the inclusions has to be right. When you have those three, you have a diamond worth putting your money into. So until next time, go to our website, afishman.com, read what we say. We'll be back to you with another edition of the Ultimate Diamond Education Series very soon. Have a great day.